Serena is a lawyer who works for a sadist millionaire named Roland. He orders Serena to go to Serbia to get him a mysterious wooden box in exchange for a case full of money. When she returns to Massachusetts, a big exquisite party is being held at Roland's grand mansion. There, Serena meets a sex worker named Joey, and she tells him that Roland would enjoy his company. She then asks Joey to walk to the end of the hall, but does not specify what he will be doing. Joey shows up at the center of the hall, where different artifacts are in exhibition, but one particular piece placed at the center of the hall grabs his attention. Without much thinking, Joey lifts that object and keenly observes it just when Roland Vaught makes his appearance. Roland lets him know that the object in his hand is a one-of-a-kind puzzle and encourages him to solve its final stage. When Joey asks if there is any prize for him if he completes it, Roland reveals that the award always goes to the owner of the piece. Joey laughs it off and begins solving the puzzle, and without any warning, a blade springs out of it and pierces his hand. As the blood oozes out, Joey throws the blood-stained puzzle on the ground and instinctively tries to escape. However, Roland closes the door by flicking a simple switch. While Joey is shaking out of fear, a wall suddenly opens up and several chains come flying towards him. Each chain is equipped with a hook, with the help of which Joey is suspended in the air. At the same time, the puzzle has changed its structure on its own. Then, Roland places the complete puzzle on the platform and prays for the great leviathan to grant his wish. Six years later, we see a young girl named Riley living in her brother Matt's apartment. They share the apartment with Matt's boyfriend, Colin, and a roommate named Nora. Riley has been struggling to recover from her addiction, and Matt is overly concerned about her. He particularly does not like Trevor, a guy with whom Riley has been hanging out with lately. Riley tells him that she won't be seeing Trevor again, but she does not keep her word. If not in Matt's apartment, she would hang out with Trevor at his place. One day, when Riley was complaining that her job is not enough to make enough money, Trevor tells her about this warehouse where a billionaire has dropped off a huge shipment recently. He explains that except for the last shipment, the entire warehouse was abandoned, and says this shipment belongs to some filthy rich person who won't even notice if a thing or two goes missing, Trevor persuades Riley to give him a hand and possibly make millions together. That rainy evening, the two of them go to the abandoned warehouse, and after taking a sip of alcohol, they break in and find a safety vault. On breaking its lock, the couple finds a wooden box and nothing else. Riley opens it and discovers a small antique cube inside, and she's fascinated by it. She asks Trevor if she can have it, and Trevor readily agrees. Later on, Riley comes home slightly intoxicated, and seeing her in this state, Matt gets enraged and yells at her, which leads to a heated argument. In a fit of anger, Matt shouts at her to get out of his house, and without a second thought, Riley packs up her bags and storms out. Outside the building, Colin tells her to go back home and tries to calm her down, but his words fall on Riley's deaf ears. Next, Riley puts her bag in the car to leave, but since she has no place to crash for the night, she takes the cube and enters a playground. Riley sits in the park carousel alone, and while fidgeting with the cube, she realizes it to be some kind of puzzle. Not sure of how it works, Riley twists and turns the puzzle parts, and all of a sudden, a thin blade protrudes out of it, almost slashing her palm. Even though the blade didn't cut her, Riley starts to get a little dizzy and she falls down, and in her hazy state, she sees a Cenobite appearing from the dark. This humanoid creature claims that the blade was meant for her. The pinhead, who seems to be the leader, possesses the puzzle cube and binds it to Riley. Scared out of her mind, Riley yells at the creature not to hurt her, but the pinhead demands that if she does not sacrifice herself, she must bring someone else. Just then, the chains that come out of Riley's chest dig deep into Matt's body, and on the other side, Matt wakes up from a nightmare. And unable to shake things off, he sets off in search of his sister in the middle of the night. Moments later, Matt notices Riley's car in the parking lot, but the girl's nowhere to be seen. He starts scanning the area nearby and spots her lying on the playground. And while trying to remove the cube from her hand, he ends up cutting his own. However, Matt tosses the cube aside and focuses on waking up Riley. A few moments later, she regains consciousness, and Matt takes her to the public washroom to freshen up. He tells Riley to stay put and enters the washroom to rinse off the blood. But as Matt is cleaning the wound, his vision starts to get blurry and the interior begins to change. Meanwhile, Riley notices the cube changing its shape after it absorbed Matt's blood. And seconds later, she hears her brother scream. Riley immediately goes to the washroom to check on her brother, but she's shocked to see the hall empty. And just like that, Matt vanishes into thin air. In the next scene, we see paramedics and police on the scene. They ask Riley if she's taken any pills or alcohol recently, but the girl is simply too phased to remember anything. As they discussed last night's events, Colin mentions that the police are still verifying the blood on the sink. However, Riley is adamant 
adamant that the blood has to be Matt's since he is the only one around with a bleeding hand. When Nora and Colin further question her about last night, Riley reveals that she took some pills before entering the playground, and after a while she started hallucinating. But Riley is not sure if she actually saw it, or if it was just her reaction to the pills. Next she goes to seek comfort in Trevor's arms. They get intimate with each other, and even there, the Cinnabite haunts her. The previous night might be a case of hallucination, but now that she is sober, Riley is still seeing things. Now she believes that Matt's disappearance is related to the puzzle cube, so she asks Trevor to figure out where the box came from, or if there is anybody related to the box. A few days later, Trevor tracks down Serena, and the couple visit her in an institution where she's awaiting her final days. When Riley questions her about the puzzle cube, Serena reveals that she was the one who locked that thing. She tells them that her former boss, Roland Vaught's life, ended because of the cube. Riley puts the puzzle in front of her, and seeing that the puzzle is no longer in cube shape, Serena asks who touched it. And desperate to know what's going on, Riley replies that her brother was the one that touched it. And without the need to mention, Serena already knows that Matt is now gone forever. Next, Serena sends Trevor away to get her some water, and once he is gone, she grabs the puzzle saying that she is locking it up for their own good. But Riley tries to snatch it back and ends up cutting Serena's head. Immediately, Serena is taken to the infirmary to tend to her wounds. But she starts to see the walls being pushed back while a Cinnabite comes out of it. She desperately tries to escape the scene, but she ends up getting cornered by more Cinnabites. And moments after that, Serena also disappears without any trace. Back in Trevor's apartment, Riley searches about Roland Vaught on the internet, and finds out that the millionaire is also an occult collector. The news article says that six years ago, Roland Vaught disappeared and was presumed to be dead. She appraises her findings to Trevor, and tells him that they need to check Roland's mansion to find out the truth. Just then, Riley gets a phone call from Colin, asking about her whereabouts, to which she truthfully responds. Colin asks for the address so he would come pick her up. And while Riley is busy with the call, Trevor sneaks out with the puzzle, most probably to discard it. However, Riley chases him out and retrieves it back. She gets angry with him for not believing in her, so she alone makes her way to Roland's mansion. Arriving at her destination, the gate opens up automatically, and Riley is greeted by the huge mansion protected by the cage. She enters the house and reaches the hall, where there used to be an antique exhibition. She tries turning on the lights, but discovers that the switches are for different locks, and it even opens the cage. Leaving the cage open, Riley goes to search for more information on the puzzle. Eventually, she reaches the study room where she finds drawings of Cinnabites. And along with that, Riley finds a journal that reveals the puzzle's six configurations. Each configuration requires a life sacrifice for the puzzle to advance into the succeeding configuration. And whoever possesses the last configuration can have an audience with the god Leviathan and receive their ultimate desire. Just then, Riley hears Matt's voice calling her name and asking for help. Following the voice, she reaches the basement and sees him. But when she hugs her brother, Riley's hands drill into his ripped flesh on his back. Just then, a voice tells her to bring him back to life, but Riley freaks out and screams like crazy. At the same time, Colin, Nora, and Trevor show up to take her back home. However, Riley tells them that she's not going back without her brother. Colin tries to talk her into returning home, while Trevor and Nora give them space to have a conversation. And at that moment, Riley briefs him about the puzzle's configurations and talks about the possibility of resurrecting her brother. In the meantime, Trevor gets excited to find alcohol in the cabinet, but Nora tells him not to drink around Riley. Respecting her opinion, Trevor excuses himself while Nora checks the switches under the table, but she accidentally opens a door on the wall. Nora curiously enters the secret passage, but unfortunately, she ends up getting trapped. Now, what awaits her behind the wall is unimaginable. Roland has been hiding behind the wall for all these years. He swiftly gets his hand on the puzzle, solves the configuration, and stabs Nora with the protruded blade. Her scream alerts the others and they rush to help her. And while trying to escape, Nora arrives at the same hall and the other three also get there. Now that Nora's life is in danger, they decide to retreat, but they end up getting lost in the forest. Despite being in the same vehicle, Nora sees that she is left behind. As the surrounding changes, she finds herself in the unknown passageway, and Cinnabites start to appear. Suddenly, the flying chain attaches to her body and levitates her in the air. Then, the pinhead tortures Nora by poking a pin through her neck, and another Cinnabite pulls her head and separates it from her body, splattering her blood everywhere. Riley witnesses Nora's horrible ending when she looks in the back mirror, but it is too late to help her now, and when Trevor looks back and sees the pool of blood, he loses his balance and the van crashes into a tree. 
Riley regrets not getting rid of the puzzle and risking her friends' lives. Meanwhile, Trevor urges the group to go back to Riley's car, but Colin does not agree with this suggestion. As they are in the middle of an argument, Riley grabs the puzzle and walks off on her own. Just as she is about to throw the puzzle into the lake, the pinhead stops her and recounts the boundless gifts that she might claim if she proceeds with the puzzle. Riley claims that she doesn't want anything from the puzzle, but resurrecting her brother Matt is still on her mind. The pinhead reminds her that after two more sacrifices, she can unlock the final configuration and meet her brother. Since Riley is not willing to proceed, the pinhead cuts her hand with the puzzle to ensure that Riley's soul will be theirs if she fails to feed the cube two more sacrifices. Soon, a chatterer appears from the ground to ensure the sacrifice, and since their van has broken down, the group has no other option but to run back to Roland's mansion. As Riley is marked one, the chatterer chases after her, but in the process, Riley and Trevor get trapped by a metal cage that crushes Trevor's leg, and on top of that, the chatterer also injures Trevor's arm by biting on it. Without much thinking, Riley stabs the chatterer with the puzzle's blade, and on the pinhead's cue, his body is torn apart by the hooked chains. And now, all three of them enter the mansion and lock the cage behind them. After letting Trevor rest, Colin and Riley discuss what to do next. Sitting idle is not a solution for their situation, and on top of that, Trevor requires medical attention urgently. Riley tells Colin that he should leave with Trevor when the time comes, but Colin refuses to leave her behind. Just in that moment, Riley realizes that since it worked on the Chatterer, it must work on the other Cinnabites as well. She then plans to let one Cinnabite inside and stab it with a blade. In the next scene, everything seems to be going well. They open the cage and lead one in before closing the door. However, this particular Cinnabite is called Asphyx, and its nose is very sensitive, so it begins chasing them inside the house. Trevor locks the door just in time and manages to get it stuck in the bar door, but while running, Riley ends up dropping the puzzle. Colin tries searching for it, but he is unable to locate it. And all of a sudden, Roland stabs him with the blade, while Trevor yells that Roland is a funny name. On the other hand, Riley is shocked to see Roland is alive. He is in a painful condition where the machine embedded in his body continuously pulls his nerves. But more importantly, Riley is devastated to uncover that Trevor has been working for Roland to find people to sacrifice. Now with Colin's blood, the final configuration is unlocked, and Roland requests Leviathan's audience. The roof is open and the Leviathan appears, parting the sky, while other Cinnabites appear as well. Riley urges Colin to escape as he has been marked. Dragging his injured body, Colin reaches the basement, but right before him is another Cinnabite named The Gasp. On the other hand, Roland activates the locks just in time when the pinhead is about to enter. While he is arguing with the pinhead, Riley sneaks into the hall through the partially opened bar, and after grabbing the puzzle, she opens the bar door for the pinhead to enter. However, at that same time, the door in the basement that was keeping the gasp out has also opened. Then it uses a wire and coils it around Colin's body, threatening his life, and he lets out a loud scream. Following the scream, Riley arrives in the basement. She then decides to sacrifice Trevor and stabs him with the blade for his betrayal. Shortly after, the wire wraps around his neck, arms, and body before he falls into the depthless hole. On the other hand, Roland begs Pinhead to remove the machine and let him die. The Pinhead makes him aware that gifts can be ungifted, but they can certainly be exchanged. She offers him power with the Leviathan configuration. Then all embedded machines break down and the void in his chest begins to fill up. However, his happiness does not last much longer as a huge chain descends from the sky and impales him, eventually lifting him away. Next, when the Pinhead allows Riley to choose her reward, she refuses to choose anything, as she has accepted that Matt is long gone. The Cinnabites tell her that by choosing to live her life full of regret, she has chosen the gift of lament, and they warn her about the suffering that has barely started. Then the puzzle returns back to its original cube shape, and the Cinnabites disappear, leaving the puzzle on the floor. Riley walks out of the mansion and tells Colin that she's made a choice. When he asks her if the choice was the right one, Riley can't seem to answer him. Finally, as the movie ends, we see Roland waking up in hell. As his flesh starts peeling, he undergoes a transformation to become a new Cinnabite himself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the movie ends. Anyways, like the video, subscribe. I will see you guys on the next recap. Bye!